Hello everyone, welcome to what if Issei teleported to BEN 10 and had Omnitrix part 1. Before we start please go support Photon DX10 for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. Issei's aliens. Issei Haidu. Issei's Omnitrix Issei's boosted gear becomes a red Omnitrix. Dot. 1. Gigantosaurus. 2. Icy. 3. Turbo Stripe. 4. Spider Monkey. 5. Muddy. Ben's aliens. Ben Tennyson. Ben's Omnitrix. 1. Faurums. 2. Hell. 3.XLR8. 4. Cannon Beam. 5. Malayerba. Chapter 00. Stormy Day Issei and the Gamer Helmet. Of Issei. Because of an invention by Azazel during a stormy day, I ended up having my mind transported to the video game of my childhood, Ben 10 Protector of Earth. Riaz and the others panicked about what happened to me, but why don't I tell you the story myself? It happened three months ago. Three months ago. It was Friday and it was recess time at Kuo Academy, and I was sitting near a tree thinking about Riaz and the other women in my harem, until I heard from a distance my two friends Mitsuda and Motohama, who were getting a beating from me of the kendo club girls. Lately I'm not getting into trouble for my perversions. My friend Kibuyudo, also known as the Prince of Kuo Academy, came next to me and he told me to go to the occult club that Azazel wanted to talk to me alone about something important. Kiba. Issei, on behalf of Azazel that you go to the occult club, who wants to talk to you alone. Kiba said. Issei. Okay I'll go, thanks Kiba. I said and I entered the occult club and saw the leader of the Fallen Angels faction, and currently a professor at the Kuo Academy, Azazel. Azazel. Issei, I'm glad you came I have something important to show you, I was originally going to show it to Kaneko, but she had no interest, so I'm showing it to you. Azazel said showing a box covered with a cloth. Issei. Who knows what it is? I asked Azazel. Azazel. Issei, I present to you my latest creation. The gamer helmet said Azazel, removing the cloth and removing his new invention from the box, and I saw that it was a black helmet with headphones implanted and with a drawing of a skull in the center. Issei. The gamer helmet. To me it looks like an Air Force helmet that pilots wear to communicate with each other. I said to Azazel. Azazel. Well, it was before, now it is a helmet for playing video games and capable of controlling the functions of the games with the mind. I consider it my greatest creation. And if you're wondering where I got the helmet from? I bought it at a pawn shop. Said Azazel and I was surprised that the gamer helmet is capable of controlling the functions of video games with the mind, I must admit that I like its shape, and I know that tomorrow during the weekend afternoon, I am going to start playing like never before. Issei. I must admit Azazel that I like the helmet a lot. I said to Azazel. Azazel. Well, I'm glad you like it, since I'm giving it to you. Azazel said and gave me the gamer helmet. Issei. What? Are you giving it to me, seriously? Thank you Azazel. I said to Azazel and I saw the time on the clock and I noticed that recess time was ending and I had to go back to class. Azazel. You better go back to class, Issei, you don't want Roswis to punish you after class. Azazel said and I nodded and returned to my classroom and Azazel decided to take care of the gamer helmet until I can pick it up after class. Normal Pav. Classes ended at 1600 hours in the afternoon and all the students returned to their homes and Issei went back to the occult club building to pick up Azazel's gamer helmet and returned home so he could use it and have all the fun. Weekend. She came home and saw that her parents left a note that they went on a trip over the weekend, courtesy of Ria's father. He saw what his friends were doing, especially Ria's. Ria's and Akeno playing chess, Asia reading a book, Kaneko eating a sandwich and watching TV, Irina taking a nap, Zenovia sitting on the couch with her leg in a cast that she sprained in gym class, Ravel doing homework, and Ross was correcting exams. Ria's. Issei, you're back and what's in that box? Ria's asked. Issei. It's something Azazel gave me and I was going to unpack it in my room right now. Issei said to Ria's. Kaneko. Isn't it a black helmet with a skull? Kaneko asked and I know Azazel offered it to her, but she didn't want to. Issei. No, sorry, I'm in a hurry to go to the basement. Issei said lying and ran to the basement of his house. Akeno. Ara Ara, I wonder why Issei was in such a hurry to go to the basement. Maybe I'll go see it. Akeno said licking her fingers like the seductress that she is. Rias. Akeno, if anyone is going to see Issei in the basement, it will be me Rias said angrily. Akeno. What's up, Rias are you afraid that Issei loves me more than you? Akeno said, tempting Ria's and giggling. Ria's. No, Akeno, but because I know your tricks and I know that you're trying to seduce my Issei Ria said very angry at Akeno, but the two's discussion was interrupted by Irina, who woke up from her nap. Irina. Girls, look what they've said right now on the news Irina said, and the others saw what the meteorologist said on the news. Meteorologist. There will be a strong thunderstorm today afternoon about 5 p.m. Stay inside your homes and avoid turning on appliances or anything electric under any circumstances. 
said the meteorologist and the others were alerted. Zenovia. Akeno, what time is it now? Zenovia asked somewhat nervously. Akeno. It's 16.50 right now. Akeno said looking at the clock and the others panicked. All. Issei the girl said in unison and ran to the basement to warn Issei. Of Issei, back with me, I opened the door to my basement, which now became my gaming room, and the entire interior was seen. Five TVs with several consoles plugged in PS2, PS3, PS4, XBOX 360, XBOX 1. I still thank Serzich's, Rhea's brother, for modifying my basement and transforming it into a gaming room so I can use it, then I locked the door. Issei. Well, time to turn on my old PS2 and play video games with Azazel's helmet. I'm going to leave the gamer headset on my computer chair in the meantime. I said and turned on my old PS2, courtesy of Serzich's for restoring it and leaving it like new, and I went to my bookshelf and picked up the video game of my childhood Ben 10 Protector of Earth for PS2. They say. Oh yeah, time to beat the final level, defeat Vilgax and beat the game. I said and I took the gamer helmet and put it on my head, I put the PS2 adapter into the helmet, I pressed continue in the start menu, and I started playing. But my dragon partner Drag noticed something is not right. Drag. Mate, something's not right. Drag said. They say. Why do you say that, Drag? I said I got up from my chair and opened my mini fridge and grabbed a can of watermelon soda. Drag. I can tell something horrible is going to happen to you, and I won't be able to help you if you start playing with that helmet on. Drag said very worried. They say. Don't be a bird of ill omen, Drag, I'll just play the last level of Ben 10 Protector of Earth and start playing something else, man. I said, ignoring Drake's warning, not knowing that I was going to regret what I said now. When I reached the final part of the last level and was about to beat the game, the unimaginable happened. My entire gaming room went dark, and the entire game restarted, and I got angry like never before. They say. What the hell. The entire game has been reset all my achievements and hours I spent playing and all for nothing this can't get worse or what. I said, screaming very enraged and without knowing I was hit by a strong electric current from the gamer helmet, screaming an unimaginable pain, and I noticed how my whole body was shaking, and I fell unconscious to the ground, and everything before me turned black. Avrius, the girls and I went down to the basement to tell Issei about the storm, and we were going to open the basement door, but it was locked. Arias. Oh no, it's closed I said, worried about Issei. Arena. Don't worry, girls, I have the spare key for the basement. Irina said and opened the basement door, which thanks to my brother Serzich's, is now a gaming room for my dear Issei, and I saw Issei unconscious on the floor, and Asia saw that he had the TV on and was playing a video game. Asia. Oh no, Issei, please wake up what happened to it. Asia said with tears on her face when she saw Issei KO. Kaneko. Shit, he's wearing his gamer helmet Azazel, you bucking son of a bitch Kaneko said, enraged that this was Azazel's fault because of a helmet that Issei was wearing. Rias. Kaneko, what is that gamer helmet you're talking about, is it the helmet Issei was wearing right now? I asked with tears coming out of my face. Kaneko. It's a helmet that Azazel created to play video games and control options with his mind, he was going to offer it to me, but I refused. Kaneko said and I started to get angry that because of Azazel's invention, Issei was now unconscious. Roswis. One thing is for sure, Issei's heart and his other vital organs are still functioning, but it's as if his mind is not in his body. Roswis said. Akeno. How does Issei come up with the idea of playing video games during a thunderstorm, doesn't he know that he would be hit by lightning because of what they said on the news? Issei, please wake up. Akeno said, releasing a tear. Kaneko. What matters now is helping Issei. Kaneko said and we prepared to take Issei's unconscious body to the living room and take care of him and along the way, Ravel called Azazel on the phone about what had happened and entered the house from a portal. Azazel. I came as quickly as possible, what happened to Issei, and why are you looking at me with angry faces? Azazel said and received a punch to the stomach from Kaneko. Azazel. What was that for? Azazel said, moaning in pain. Roswis. Because of your invention, Issei was electrocuted and is now unconscious, Roswis said angrily to the fallen angel. Rias. We were hoping that you could help us make Issei well. I said to Azazel. Azazel. Let me see Issei. Asia, cure it, please. Azazel said and started looking at the gamer helmet, and Asia stood next to Issei to heal him. Akeno. I hope the lightning didn't hit Issei hard, I don't want to see him dead. Akeno said worriedly. Ravel. Don't worry, Akeno. Issei will recover in a couple of hours, I'm sure. Ravel said very confidently. Azazel. It's worse than I could have imagined. Azazel said in a worried tone that alerted the other women in Issei's harem. Zenovia. What do you mean, Azazel? Zenovia asked. Azazel. I mean that Issei's mind is no longer in his body. Azazel said. Irina. But how is it possible? Irina asked worriedly. Azazel. 
I mean that the gamer helmet is uploaded as Say's mind to his game console. Your body is alive, but without your mind you will be in a vegetative state. As Azul said to the girls of Issei's harem. Rias. No, I love my Issei body and soul if it weren't for that helmet, I wouldn't be like this I'm going to take it away from you by force I said crying, but Azazel and Kaneko stopped me. Kaneko. Don't do it, Rias Kaneko said. Azazel. If you take off Issei's helmet by force, you will kill him Azazel said. Rias. How did he kill Issei? I asked Azazel and Kaneko. Azazel. The gamer helmet has a protection system to prevent the person wearing it from being interrupted, and if you take it off by force, it will electrocute Issei's other vital organs and leave him dead and his mind would be trapped in cyberspace. Akeno. What do we do now? Akeno asked desperately and we saw what Kaneko was doing, sit on the couch in Issei's gaming room and play Issei's video game. Rias. Kaneko, it's not time to play video games, it's time to save Issei I said desperately, and Kaneko threw the cover of Issei's video game at my head. I picked up the cover, and I saw that it said Ben 10 Protector of Earth, and I saw on the cover the photo of a boy who seemed to be the same age as my nephew Milika's, and I saw that his arm was very rocky, and what seemed to be a wristband with a strange symbol. I also saw that on the cover there was a Matorham driving over what appeared to be the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco in the United States, but it was destroyed by a giant robot, and another silhouette of what appeared to be a monster with a face. From Squid. I don't know, but the squid kind of scares me like it's even more powerful and more dangerous than Trahixa. Rias. I don't know, but the squid on the cover scares me a little. I said and I started to tremble in disgust at the squid. Arena. Who's, Vilgax? Said Arena who seemed to know the squid from the cover of Issei's video game cover. Rias, how do you know about squid arena? I asked Lord Michael's ace. Akeno. Ara ara, Rias, it seems you don't know Ben 10, right? Akeno said. Rias. Who is Ben 10? Isn't it the boy on the cover with a weird wristband? I asked, confused, how do Akeno and Arena know about the boy on the cover? Arena. First, Ben 10 is the boy on the cover, and he is 10 years old. Second, the wristband is a watch and it's called the Omnitrix, and it allows Ben to transform into powerful aliens with superpowers. And third, the squid's name is Vilgax, he's Ben's archenemy and his goal is to get the Omnitrix by any way possible, even kill if necessary and Ben kicked his tentacled butt on more than one occasion. Irina explained and Akeno continued for her. Akeno. There are TV series, video games, toys and more fan articles about Ben 10 that you can't even imagine, Rias. Akeno said. Rias. And how come I never heard of that Ben 10 guy before? I asked indignantly. Kaneko. Maybe outer space isn't that interesting for the inhabitants of the underworld and high class families don't believe in aliens. Kaneko said, starting to create a profile in Issei's game. Ravel. Yes, it's true, and you and I have a physics exam next week, Kaneko, and you haven't studied yet. Ravel said and he saw that Kaneko fell off the couch because of what he saw on the screen. Zenovia. Kaneko, what's wrong, why did you fall? Zenovia asked. Kaneko. Look at the screen, quick, you can't believe who I've seen Kaneko said, and all of us couldn't believe who we saw on the TV screen. All. Issei we said in unison. Chapter 01. Issei in the Grand Canyon 2 Heroes in Action Of Issei, I was waking up and I looked around and I noticed that I was no longer in my house, but I was in I don't know where, but the interior looked very familiar to me as if I had seen it before. Issei. Where the hell am I and why does this place look familiar to me, and why does my wrist feel so heavy? I asked myself and looked at my wrist and noticed a red and white wristwatch. It was the Omnitrix from Ben 10 Alien Force. Issei. A red Omnitrix. But only Albedo has it and he's the Ben 10 villain that I like least I said, and then I heard footsteps and went to grab my jacket near the table. Voice Gwen, Grandpa, I wonder if the boy we found is okay. Ask the voice that belonged to a girl. Voice Ben, not only if he will be okay, but I will also ask him where he got a red Omnitrix, I thought there was only one Omnitrix. Said the voice of a child that seemed very familiar to me. Voice Max, don't worry, it'll be fine I guess. Said the voice of an old man and opened the door, and I saw who they were, and I couldn't believe it. They were Grandpa Max, Gwen Tennyson and, to my surprise, Ben Tennyson Ben 10 in person and in front of me. Issei. I I just screamed when I saw three characters from a cartoon series in front of me in real life. I hope this is just a dream. Max. Boy, calm down, we're not going to hurt you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Grandpa Max asked and I nodded. Issei. Yes, thanks for asking. But where am I exactly? I asked. Max. You're in my Matorham, La Tartana, and right now we're in the Grand Canyon in the United States of America. Grandpa Max said and I decided to go outside, and I saw the Grand Canyon and also La Tartana. They say. Wow, it's official, I'm not in Kuo anymore. Someone pinch me, I'm dreaming ouch, what was that for? 
I said and noticed how Ben and Gwen were pinching me on both arms. Ben. You said to pinch you. Ben said. Gwen. So we did it. We haven't introduced ourselves I'm Gwen Tennyson. Gwen said introducing herself to me. Ben. I'm Ben Tennyson and the old man who found you lying in the middle of the street is our grandpa Max. And what's your name? Ben asked by my name. Issei. My name is Issei Haidu and I come from Kuo, Japan. I said to Ben, Gwen and Max. Ben, nice to meet you Issei. By the way, where did you get that red and white Omnitrix? And why is it shaped like a wristwatch? Ben asked me, but I have no idea where I got that red and white Omnitrix from. Issei. If I'm honest, Ben, I don't have the slightest idea where that Omnitrix came from. The only thing I remember is that I was at home playing video games when I was hit by lightning and fell to the ground unconscious. I said everything I remembered. Gwen. Wait, you were hit by lightning and you're still alive. Gwen asked, surprised at what I said. I say. Well yes, I'm going to try calling Rias and the others to see if they can come pick me up and go back to Kuo. I said, trying to call Rias on my cell phone, but Rias' number wasn't online, it was like she didn't exist. Max. Apparently he doesn't respond, how about you tell us something about yourself inside the Tartana, Issei. Max suggested and I nodded and we went inside the Tartana and I told them about myself. That I was reborn as a demon into the nobility of Rhea's Gremory, that I defeated Riser to free Rhea's from her arranged marriage, that I defeated a fallen angel Cadre de Grigori, and all the rest. Minus the part about me becoming a filthy monster because of Juggernaut Drive, then. Wow, and I thought that finding the Omnitrix and becoming a hero was incredible, and you, at 16 years old, already have better adventures than me, I envy you, you know. Ben said somewhat enviously. Gwen. And I thought that all demons were evil, how wrong I have been. Gwen said. I say, still, I wonder where this Omnitrix came from, and I wonder what aliens I have, and if they are the same aliens as you Ben. I said and I heard how my gut started to roar. Max. Apparently someone's hungry, it's time for dinner, guys. And today, it's going to be a feast, I assure you. Max and Ben said, Gwen and I went to the tartan table, and after 15 minutes dinner was ready. Well, the Max Tennyson style dinner. Max. Congratulations, Issei, today for dinner there is bittersweet kuwagata deer beetle. Grandpa Max said, putting plates with stag beetles and sweet and sour sauce. Gwen. Seriously, Grandpa, you cook weirder things every day. Gwen said disgusted. Ben. I've already lost my appetite, still, thanks. Ben said trying to get up from the table, but I stopped him and put him back on the table, and I started eating a sweet and sour beetle, and I liked it. Issei. How delicious said me eating the sweet and sour beetles. Max. Apparently there's someone who likes my cooking. Take an example of Issei, Ben and Gwen. Max said to his grandchildren that apparently there is someone who appreciates his cooking and eats it without complaining. After half an hour we finished dinner and Ben started to analyze my red Omnitrix and was surprised that it showed holograms of my aliens and it had the same aliens that Ben had in Ben 10 Alien Force, except that instead of Alien Polar Star. Ben. Incredible, all your aliens are different from mine and I wonder what powers they have. Ben said curiously upon seeing my Omnitrix. It's strange, as a child I always wanted to be like Ben 10, and at 16 years old that dream came true. Max. Guys, time for bed. Max said and Ben and Gwen went to bed and I got ready to sleep on the Tartana sofa, Max gave me a blanket and I used my jacket as a pillow, and we went to sleep. But I had the strange feeling that something was going to happen, something evil. Normal Pav, an intimidating spaceship was seen in outer space. It was the Chimerian Hammer, the ship of the evil Vilgax. Inside was an alien with squid-like attributes, tentacles like a beard, very intimidating red eyes, and a very muscular left arm, with two spikes in the elbow area, while the right arm is less muscular than the left. It was the Diabolical Lord. Of the alien war and the sovereign despot of the planet Vilgaxia, Vilgax. Vilgax is seen sitting in his chair and started talking to a person hidden in the shadow of his ship, and they started talking about his evil plan. It's time to start with the first phase of his plan, Lord Vilgax. Said the mysterious person, whose voice reveals that she is a woman. Vilgax. Yes, and according to my cameras, Ben Tennyson met a young man with a red Omnitrix. Said the evil Vilgax, and the person looked from the screen of the ship who it was. They say hi do. No, anyone but him because. When he thought everything was going well for me, he comes and ruins everything for me said the mysterious woman who had a grudge against the Sekar Uite. Vilgax. Don't worry, I've already sent two Mesquitabits to extract the powers of the two Omnitrixes and leave Tennyson and his new friend vulnerable. Vilgax said assuring the mysterious woman. I hope so. Said the mysterious woman. 
Returning to Earth, Ben, Gwen, Max and Issei are fast asleep, with Ben snoring without knowing that two small mosquito-shaped robots entered through the window and positioned themselves in Ben and Issei's Omnitrix and sucked the energy from both watches. After two minutes the mosquitobits left Ben and Issei's watches and they both woke up, not knowing that their watches gave off small sparks. Ben. But what? Ben said somewhat sleepy. Issei. Ben, it's two in the morning, please go to sleep. Issei said somewhat sleepy. Ben. Sorry, I thought I heard a hum. Ben said and then went back to sleep. Issei. It must have been your imagination. Issei said and went back to sleep while he dreamed about the usual thing. The breasts of the girls in his harem, especially Rhea's. Without knowing that Vilgax is going to start phase two of his evil plan. Of Issei. The next morning, about 8.30, we heard a bang that landed near the Grand Canyon, as if it had been a meteorite. There was a tremor and Ben fell off the top bunk, waking me up in the process. Issei. Op aced Arias but what the hell happened, what was that noise? I asked and I got up from the table where I was sleeping and I picked up Ben from the floor and Grandpa Max just came. Max. Okay, you're awake. Something just made an emergency landing in the canyon. Max said and Ben and I left wait, it's the same thing Max says in the opening scene of the first level of Ben 10 Protector of Earth I'm inside a video game. We saw Gwen sitting on a bench typing on her laptop that is surely hacking the Grand Canyon Ranger security cameras. Gwen. Good morning, Ben and Issei. Gwen said. Issei. Hey Gwen, what are you doing? I said, pretending not to know what I was doing, but I knew very well what was happening. Gwen. I'm going to enter the chambers of the ranger post, maybe we can get a closer look at what had landed near the Grand Canyon. Issei. Good idea. I said. Ben. Don't worry, leave it to a professional, I'll go there as XLR8 and Issei, and I will check it out. Ben said and I got involved in his idea. Issei. Ben, I'm not sure if you should transform, I have a bad feeling. I said, worried and knowing well what is going to happen now. Ben. Come on, I want to see your aliens in action, Issei if you want, we will say it together Ben said, and I nodded. Issei. Okay I said and in unison Ben and I said the most iconic phrase of him. The two. Hero in action the two of us said and Ben tried to become XLR8 and I became Turbo Raya, but we failed miserably. Ben. What's going on? Ben asked in shock. Issei. Oh no, what I was afraid of. We only have two aliens in our Omnitrix. You only have Faurums and Inferno, while I have Gigantosaurus and Icy. I said to Ben, but he wanted to force a transformation by biting. Issei. Ben, let's better go to the Grand Canyon and see if our Omnitrix will activate later. I suggested Ben. Max. Good idea, Issei. Let's see Gwen. What have you found in the chambers of the Ranger Post? Grandpa Max asked, and Ben and I are going to start the first level of the game, and the first enemies appeared. The Vilgax drones. Issei. Ben, these drones have light shielding. But they attack in formation. We will have to destroy them quickly. I said to Ben with the information that Grandpa Max gives about the enemies of the game. Ben. Let's see if the clocks work now, Issei Ben said with the Omnitrix ready. Issei. Go ahead I said me and Ben and I transformed. Ben became four arms and I became a Gigantosaurus. Issei Gigantosaurus, Gigantosaurus I said shouting the name of the alien, and I couldn't believe that he was transformed into an alien. Ben four arms, why are you shouting the name of the alien? Ben asked, since he doesn't shout the names of aliens until he's 15 years old. Issei. To cause fear to my enemies. I said to Ben. Ben four arms, cool, I'll do it too from now on. Four arms Ben said shouting the name of the alien, and we prepared to fight against the Vilgax drones, and we broke them with several blows, knowing how strong Faurums and Gigantosaurus are respectively. Upon destroying all the drones, we prepared to follow the path that will take us to the rest of the level, and we were attacked by Vilgax drones, and I saw behind the boss of the first level lying down from behind. The drones were defeated after four or five hits. Ben and I detransformed and saw fire everywhere. Ben. Issei, you don't have a fire alien, do you? Ben asked. Issei. No, but I have one of ice if that's okay. I said to Ben and he nodded and we transformed into Inferno and Frigid respectively. Ben Inferno, hell Ben shouted. Issei I see, I see I shouted and Ben and I put out the fire and jumped over the ravine and I closed the wings of the coal to turn it into a cloak. Along the way, more Vilgax drones were coming to touch our noses, but we defeated them with a fire and ice combo. Ben Inferno, we make a good team. Ben said. Issei I see, of course, Ibu. I said to Ben. Ben Inferno, what did you call me? Ben asked. Issei I see, Ibu means companion, I clarified it to Ben, and we continued forward, and we were cornered by more Vilgax drones, and we broke them with four or five hits again, but now the next enemy came to us. The laser drone dot. Issei I see, Ben, be careful, these drones have been upgraded with laser beams. 
I told Ben the information about the laser drone. Although Ben defeated him with a blow from behind, we heard a tremor coming from the other side of the ravine, it was the first boss of the game. The giant destroyer Vilgax and he was heading towards the west. Ben and I had to deal with Vilgax's drones before, but we defeated them with several attacks. Ben decided to jump over the ravines by jumping with fire, while I decided to fly to get to the next part, where Vilgax's lackeys were. Ben Inferno, it's not fair, you have an alien that flies with wings while I jump with flames, I wish I had Dragonfly right now. Ben said somewhat irritated. I say ice, not to brag, I have the same problem as you now Ben, I'm missing my aliens too. Let's continue, okay. I said to Ben and we went down without first defeating Vilgax's drones. The third enemy of the level came below. The hunter Vilgax. Upon arrival we transformed back into humans, but I kept the drone distracted so it wouldn't attack Ben. I say. Ben, the blades of the hunter drone make it very dangerous. I said to Ben and he and I were transformed again into hell and icy. I freeze the drone and Ben melted it turning it into a puddle of molten metal. More drones were coming at us, and we destroyed them with another fire and ice combo, and behind them was the giant Vilgax destroyer heading towards the caves, but a mound blocked our way, and Ben and I transformed back into humans. Ben. Issei, is Gigantosaurus capable of moving that rock so that we can climb the mound until we reach those caves? Ben asked. Say, what question is that Ben? I said to Ben and I transformed into a Gigantosaurus, and I took the rock and put it on the ground near the mound, and Ben turned into Inferno, and we entered the cave where we were attacked by hordes of Vilgax drones, trying to prevent us from reaching the exit from the cave, but we beat them with various Inferno and Gigantosaurus combos. After jumping several stalactites that were falling to the ground, we arrived near the exit of the cave, and we saw that the giant Vilgax destroyer was using the uncovered part of the cave as a punching bag, and more drones came to us, and I transformed back into a human, but Ben me covered the backs and my Omnitrix recharged and I turned icy. I say icy thanks Ben. I said. Ben Inferno you're welcome mate. Ben said. After destroying several drones, we emerged from the caves, and there was the giant Vilgax destroyer, posing menacingly and destroying the bridge to prevent Ben and I from escaping. Think that he has his chest closed. Ben Inferno, ready, Issei. Ben asked. Issei I see, I was born ready, let's go I said, and Ben and I faced the first boss of the game. The giant robot started hitting the ground with a karate punch, but I became intangible and Ben hit it in the chest with a fireball and I prepared to attack it with my ice attacks. After several hits, the robot fell exhausted, and Ben and I transformed back into our human forms to begin the first part of the action minigame. I say. Ben, it's our chance. I said to Ben and he nodded and we transformed again into Icy and Inferno, and we destroyed the left hand of Vilgax's robot, leaving him one-handed in the process and exposing part of his chest. Ben Inferno, wow, that was brutal, I say Ben said. I say Icy, this isn't over yet, be careful I said to Ben, and let's espivate the imminent blow of the robot. I stayed intangible to attack his chest and Ben decided to attack the robot's remaining arm. After several hits, the robot fell exhausted again, and Ben and I began the second part of the action minigame. We transformed into four arms and a gigantosaurus and we broke all the robot's fingers and we left him without fingers, except the thumb and exposing his entire chest. Then four arms, I don't know how long that damn robot will last. Ben said. I say gigantosaurus, we're almost there, trust me. I assured Ben and we prepared to give the final blow to Vilgax's robot, and in just a few blows the robot fell exhausted, and Ben and I prepared to attack the robot for the last time. I pushed the robot's chest so that Issei could burst the robot's right eye with a punch to make it blind, and the two of us prepared to tear out the robot's core to defeat it. Issei Gigantosaurus, at three, we shoot. One. I counted. Then four arms, two. Ben said. The two. Three the two of us said and we threw the core at the robot in its face and we defeated it, causing it to explode into a thousand pieces and its debris began to rain on us and we saw that Gwen and Grandpa Max arrived and I as a Gigantosaurus offered them to use my arm like a bridge. Max. Apparently you've already defeated Vilgax's robot, well done. Max said. Issei, it hasn't been Mr. Max. I said to Max. Ben. Issei, come. Look, I think they're Omnitrix parts Ben said, taking the green Omnitrix crystal, while well, he gave me the red crystal. We insert the men who knows which alien I will have unlocked. They say. Now we know why our watches didn't work as they should for some reason. I said, knowing very well what was happening. When? This robot must have used your Omnitrix crystals to recharge. And now the only question is. Where is the rest? Gwen said. Max. Someone sent those robots knowing that Ben and Issei were weakened. We have fallen into a trap. Max said. Issei and Ben. Hero in action the two of us said and Ben transformed into XLR8 and I transformed into Turbo Raya. 
Then XLR8, XLR8 Ben shouted like XLR8. I say Turbo Raya, Turbo Raya the first shouted like Turbo Raya. Gwen. Why do you shout the names of your aliens like retards? Gwen asked. I say Turbo Raya, to cause fear in my enemies. I said to Gwen. Then XLR8, let's go back to Tartana, I need to rest. Ben said, and we gave Gwen and Grandpa Max a trip back to Tartana. I say. I know that this is just the beginning of a crazy adventure, and I think I will only be able to return home if I pass all the levels. Rias, girls, I'll come home, I promise. I said in my thoughts and the Tennysons and I headed to our next whereabouts. Mesa Verde. Of Rias, I can't believe my eyes, Issei was inside the Ben 10 Protector of Earth video game. We must find a way to return Issei's mind to his body. Rias. Issei, he's inside a video game and he transforms into aliens, I can't believe what I see. I said when I saw Issei turn into an alien that looks like a dinosaur along with a four-armed alien. Azazel. Don't worry, Rias, I called Gaspar and Kiba to come here to help me return Issei's mind back to his body. Azazel said. Ravel. I hope we managed to bring Issei's mind back, if it weren't for him, my brother would still be a damn cretin. Ravel said. Irina. Asia, Zenovia let's pray to Lord Michael that we can save Issei. Irina said and Zenovia and Asia nodded, and the church trio began to pray for Issei's well-being. Rias. Issei, my love Issei, come back to me please, I don't know how to live without you. I said while I was crying and Akeno and Roswis comforted me and Azazel and Kaneko had looks of suspicion. Kaneko. Azazel, the voice that spoke to Vilgax in that scene seems familiar to me. Kaneko said to Azazel. Azazel. Yes, she looks very familiar, but who is she? Azazel said. Apparently Issei can only return to her world if he manages to pass all 23 levels of Ben 10 Protector of Earth, will Ben and Issei be able to recover the Omnitrix crystals and save the planet? Or will Vilgax and his new mysterious partner be victorious and dominate the entire universe? That will be seen in the next chapter. Chapter 02. Arrival at Mesa Verde Battle Against the Eternal Knights of Issei. We were traveling on La Tartana and after several hours we arrived at Mesa Verde in Montezuma County, Colorado. It was incredible how the place was, so ancient and majestic at the same time. But, I know that the Eternal Knights of Enoch roam there, and we have to face him. Along the way Gwen had a few doubts. Gwen. I don't understand. Gwen said. I say. What's wrong, Gwen? I asked. Gwen. That thing knew us too well. Ben's most adversaries. Aren't they trapped in the void? Gwen asked and it was true that a lot of Ben's enemies are held in the void dimension, but some managed to escape easily. Max. That's what worries me. Opening portals of the void belongs to the technology of plumbers. And nothing has ever escaped. Said Max, but I disagree. I say. Ben, are you seeing the same thing as me? I asked Ben. Ben. Yeah, guys, look, more robots and they are attacking a group of Eternal Knights. Ben said when he saw that there were Vilgax robots attacking Eternal Knights. Max. Eternal Knights. Maybe Enoch is behind all this. Max said and he is partly right. Ben. What would you know about getting stuck between a rock and a hard place? Who are Issei and I supposed to face now? Ben asked and I answered for Gwen. Issei, I think everyone Ben. Let's go. I said and opened the door, and Ben decided to follow me. Ben. Sounds like a good plan to me Ben said, and we went to the entrance of the canyon that will guide us to the first part of Mesa Verde. Issei. Ready, Ben. I asked. Ben. Of course Ben said. The two. Hero in action the two of us said in unison, and we transformed. I became Turbo Raya, and Ben became XLR8. Ben XLR8, XLR8 Ben shouted. I say Turbo Raya, Turbo Raya me and Ben shouted us to the first phase, and we ran into an eternal night. I say Turbo Raya, Ben, the Knights of Enoch unhesitatingly do the will of his master. No one reasons with his obtuse minds. I said describing the eternal knights. Ben XLR8, hey, how do you know? Ben asked. I say Turbo Raya, don't ask and let's defeat them, come on. I said and we attacked the eternal knights. Ben kicked the gentleman hard in the crotch and fell exhausted to the ground. I, as Turbo Raya, shot rays from their eyes to make them fall off the cliff and die. After defeating them, we continued and the next enemy attacked us. The Eternal Knight Sniper. I say Turbo Raya, Ben, power batons were one of the first technologies Enoch scientists extracted from alien artifacts. I said describing the Eternal Knight Sniper. And I attacked them with Turbo Raya's super speed, and they fell, and I grabbed one of their batons to throw it at their heads and make them full KO. After defeating them I flew Ben to the other side of the door that would normally require XLR8 and we ran into the next group of enemies. The Eternal Knights Gladiators. I say Turbo Raya, Ben, Enoch's lieutenants are armed with power sabers. Be careful. I said to Ben and he nodded. 
Ben took it upon himself to kick the gladiator's butts, and I shot the snipers with laser beams to prevent them from shooting Ben with his back turned. After 5 minutes we defeated them and headed to a steep cliff with more eternal knights, and I launched a barrage of laser beams towards them, and Ben stayed behind to prevent me from hitting him. Along the way, more eternal knights came to touch our noses, but Ben and I decided to attack them with a speed combo, and we defeated them. Ben XLR8, Enoch's minions are so dumb they don't know left from right. Ben said. The Sator Boraya, come on, come on, I feel like more enemies are coming, and we have to be prepared. I said to Ben and I took him flying and another group of enemies came to us. The bomb drones. The Sator Boraya, Ben, this variant has a grenade launcher. We better get out of the way before the bombs explode. I said and Ben and I transformed back into our human forms, and I kept the drones distracted and our watches charged, and Ben and I transformed into four arms and Gigantosaurus respectively. Ben gave the drones a brutal slap to make them fall apart, and I just stomped on them until they were scrap metal. I saw a rock and put it under the bridge mechanism for Ben and I to cross. When we reached the final part of the Mesa Verde roof, both drones and Eternal Knights came to us, and I saw that because of the weight of the Gigantosaurus, the roof was about to break. The while later, due to the weight of Gigantosaurus, the roof broke and Ben and I fell 15 meters. Unless the Gigantosaurus species is capable of growing to 20 meters and cushions the impact with my back. Ben forearms, geez, Issei, you almost killed me with your weight, Ben said like forearms, somewhat angry. Issei Gigantosaurus, it's not my fault, Gigantosaurus is normally this heavy. Try to become an alien dinosaur the size of a house. At least not for another five years. I said to Ben and the last thing in a low voice. We followed the path and ran into one of the most brutal enemies in the game. The Eternal Champion. Issei Gigantosaurus, Ben, the Eternal Champions are part of Enoch's elite guard. I'm sure this mission is a high priority for him. I said, describing one of the most beastly enemies in the game. Then four arms, time for the Forever Knights to take a beating to their faces. Ben said and proceeded to attack the Eternal Champion, and I decided to break the ribs of two snipers. Upon defeating them, I grabbed a huge block of cement that was there and stuck it under the door mechanism, and we proceeded outside. Then Vilgax's drones followed us along the way to give us a hard time, but Ben and I destroyed them without a problem. We kept going and kicked a few Eternal Knights butts until we got to what looked like a lookout and 30 Eternal Knights came up to us. It took us about 15 minutes to defeat them and one of the Knights tried to flee, but I gave the Eternal Knight the Chinese underwear to leave him in his place and we watched as Gwen and Max came. Ben and I transformed back into humans to confront the Knight. They say. Stand still there, Tin Face, we have questions to ask you. I said to the Eternal Knight. Max. You're right. Tell me what is happening. Whose robots are they? Max asked the Eternal Knight. Knight. We were heading towards the area known as Area 51. Lord Enoch leads our campaign there to annihilate the plague of the outer world. Said the Knight. Ben. Is Enoch in control of Area 51? Ben asked surprised. They say. He's not possible I said pretending to be surprised and avoid being suspected of me. Knight. It's the truth, but he just wants to free it, Lord Enoch will use the technology it contains to charge a weapon of world liberation. To stop the Eternal Knights is to deprive the Earth of its last and best hope. Said the Knight. Max. Enoch offers no hope but himself. Max said and Gwen proceeded to call the police so that the Eternal Knights who were hanging around Mesa Verde could be arrested. Gwen. We should find him before a bad situation gets even worse. Gwen said and we proceeded to go back to the Tartana and headed to our next stop, one that I thought I would never get to see, except in alien movies. Area 51. They say. I hope we arrive on time. I said and we headed to Area 51. Why will Enoch be fighting with Vilgax's robots for possession of Area 51 technology? The task Ben and I have is to stop both Enoch and Vilgax. I hope he also finds a way to come home to my friends. Chapter 03. The battle for Area 51 battle against Enoch, obviously, it was 10 at night, and we finally arrived at what is, in my opinion, one of the scariest places on the face of the earth. Area 51. Seriously, I understand that there are theories that in Area 51 they do experiments with aliens to study them, but I can't let myself be distracted by that, Ben and I must stop Enoch. Max. Area 51 This is where the government used to do all their secret alien research. This place has surely changed a lot in the last 40 years. Said Max watching Area 51 and remembering what it was also 40 years ago. They say. Yes, and in my opinion it's the scariest place on the face of the planet said I, who was shaking with terror when I saw Area 51. Gwen. Yes, and by the looks of it, I think the Eternal Knights have gotten the upper hand on us. Gwen said when she saw through the window that in some of the barracks there were Eternal Knights standing guard over the place. Max. We can't let Vilgax or Enich get the alien weapons. Max said so that Ben and I could get up from our seats. Ben. 
Yes, what they are looking for is alien weaponry Ben said. I say. Ben and I will be happy to light the way for you. I said and Ben and I came out of the Tartana to transform. The two. Hero in action the two of us said in unison, and we transformed into Hell and Frigid respectively. Ben Inferno, Hell Ben shouted like Inferno. I say I see, I see I shouted like I was cold, and we went through the entrance where there was no Eternal Knight standing guard, and the first enemy of the place did not come. The Eternal Knight Guardian. I say I see, Ben, the captains use a shield woven from strands of adamantite. Before we can harm them, we will have to destroy it. I said describing the Eternal Guardian Knight. Ben proceeded to deliver fiery punches to the Eternal Knights, while I froze them with an ice storm. More enemies came to us, but me and Ben defeated them with a fire and ice combo, but as we continued walking, another enemy came to us. The drilling drone. The say I see, Ben, the twin drills that this drone has give it a devastating attack. I said describing the drilling drone. Ben and I dodged the drones that were behind us and made them destroy each other. But we had to face more eternal knights who heard the drone attack and started attacking us, but Ben decided that we use another fire and ice combo and we defeated them. I say I see, Ben, be careful I warned Ben and he dodged two eternal knights driving a military truck that they would use it to run over Ben. Ben Inferno, a little more and I'd be dead. Ben said. I say I see, death is no laughing matter, stay alert, they're attacking us. I said to Ben. Ten eternal knights came to attack us and a few drones. But Ben proceeded to melt them with a fireball, and I froze the eternal knights to leave them as ice statues. After defeating them, we proceeded to go to the warehouse, but the worst enemy of the entire game came to us, and that still gives me nightmares to this day. The Eternal Elite Champions. They say I see, Ben, the Elite Champions are like tanks, and they're almost as tough. I said describing the Eternal Elite Champion. But with another fire and ice combo we defeated him. We arrived at the warehouse and saw the flaming circle, and proceeded to extinguish it to open the door. We entered and the next wave of enemies came to us. The Stalker Vilgax, with his lightsabers up his sleeve. I say I see, Ben, the laser swords that this drone has are capable of cutting almost any object. I said describing the stalker Vilgax. Ben decapitated the drones on the left with a flaming kick, and I froze them to shatter into rubble. We climbed the boxes that would take us to the roof, and when we arrived another new enemy came to us. The photon drone. I say I see, Ben, this drone is very dangerous. Let's destroy him before he charges the photon cannon on him I said, and we saw that elite eternal champions entered through the window and proceeded to hit us with their huge clubs, but I froze them and turned them into ice statues. Ben decided to jump up and bomb the drones with fire bombs. All the enemies were defeated and we proceeded until we reached the roof. Ben Inferno, oh no, I remember perfectly what happened in Mesa Verde, I'm not going to fall off a roof again because of you. Ben said complaining. I say ice, don't be a baby, Ben, come on, I'll take you down. I said and I broke the window with a brick that was lying there, and Ben and I went down to what seemed to be a laboratory, and there were Eternal Knights standing guard, but we defeated them, and we had a Detroitite as a spectator of the battle, but he couldn't do anything since there was a force field that prevented him from leaving. Ben and I left and were attacked by the next wave of enemies. Defender Vilgax. I say I see, Ben, before we can harm those guys we'll have to get through their shields. I said describing Defender Vilgax. Ben decided to destroy the robots with a blast of fire. I turned away and saw everything destroyed and on fire, especially the cryogenic tubes which Max according was his original design. I know Ben and I are going to get into a big fight because of him. I say I see, Ben, I know your grandfather is going to scold us for destroying the entire laboratory. I said to Ben. Ben Inferno, don't worry, I say, I already have an excuse prepared. Ben said and we saw that there was a huge metal box, and Ben and I transformed back to transform again into forearms and a gigantosaurus. I opened the door with a box and Ben activated the switch and we went down the ladder that was near a hole and we were received by 20 eternal knights and we proceeded to attack them until we KO. We proceeded and climbed the tubes of a huge machine and went up to what appeared to be an elevator and were attacked by hordes of eternal knights and saw what appeared to be a giant robot with the emblem of the eternal knights. It was the Armatron Crusader, Enoch's combat robot. After 20 minutes of battle we got to the top and saw the supposed leader of the Eternal Knights, Enoch, sitting like a pimp on his robot, we transformed back and he talked to us. Enoch. Ben Tennyson. I guess I should thank you that you and your new friend with the red omnitrix have exposed the incompetence of my subordinates. I'll take care of them when I'm done with you Enoch said and jumped onto the beast to stick her sword in the ground and pick it up again to threaten us with it. Ben. Don't believe it, Enoch. Ben said to the knight in the golden mask. I say. We are two against one, you are at a disadvantage said I to Enoch. Enoch. On guard, bearer of the Omnitrix and Sekiruite Enoch said and proceeded to attack us with his sword weight, how does Enoch know that I am the Sekiruite? 
Then the knight transformed into XLR8 and Turbo Raya and proceeded to fight Enoch. He started with launching a sonic slash from his sword, but I blocked it with a laser beam from Turbo Ray's eyes, and Ben decided to jump with a kick at Enoch, and he fell on his ass to the ground, and he got up and proceeded to attack me, and he was going to slash Enoch. Then yes, it wasn't for me that I put myself in the way so that Ben could change to all fours. As Turbo Raya the first tried to make Enoch dizzy, so that Ben could take him on his back and break Enoch's ribs with a wrestling key. With a right hook from Turbo Raya, Enoch fell defeated to the ground, and we saw that Gwen and Max had arrived when they saw that the fight was over, and we transformed back. They say. Give up, Enoch, you're surrounded and explain to me right now how you know I'm the Sekiryute I said to Enoch, angry at how he knows who I am. Ben. That, Issei isn't whatever you called him now you will no longer threaten any more people, Ben said to the Eternal Knight. Enoch. Fools what I want is to prevent the imminent cataclysm. Now your interference has endangered our entire species. Said Enoch who got up from the ground and tried to flee. Max. Cataclysm. What are you talking about? If the earth is in danger, surely we can help. Said Max to Enoch. Enoch. None of you possesses the willpower to do what is necessary to save humanity. Enoch said and jumped towards the Armatron Crusader. They say. Enoch, stop I said, but Max stopped me. Enoch. Now that I possess the Omnitrix crystals. I will use the aliens' own weaponry against them, and I will also have the powers of the Sekir Yuite, so that we Eternal Knights will be able to kill even the gods themselves tremble, Universe Enoch, and no one else, write your condemnation Enoch said, and flew away with the Armatron Crusader. They say. Enoch, I'm gonna finish you I said enraged. When? Can Omnitrix crystals be used in weapons? Gwen asked. Max. Well of course the Omnitrix not only stores DNA. It also contains incredible amounts of latent energy. Max said. Ben. Hey, sorry to interrupt the scientific conference, but Enoch's running away. Ben said pointing out that Enoch was running away from. They say, yes and he will use the powers of the Omnitrix to massacre thousands of innocent people. I said. Max. Yes, but to turn the crystals into weapons, I would first need to find a place to generate enormous amounts of electrical current. A place like Max said and Gwen answered for him. Gwen dot 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 a place like Hoover Reservoir. Gwen said. They say, yes, good idea Gwen. Let's go I said and we went to La Tartana. Ben. Seriously, Gwen. Why can't you be on a TV game show like the other know-it-alls? Ben said irritatedly and we went to our next whereabouts to fight Enoch. Hoover Reservoir. The Tennysons and I will head to the Hoover Reservoir so that Ben and I can face off against the Armatron Crusader, Enoch's combat robot. But how did Enoch know that I am the Sekir Yute? Chapter 04. Battle at Hoover Reservoir Ben and Issei vs Armatron Crusader, Av Issei. When we left Area 51, we were driving to get to the Hoover Reservoir. It was almost 1 in the morning and we still weren't there. And I saw how Ben messed with Gwen and telling her that she was wrong. Ben. Is this what we've come to? The bad guys run out of cool places to attack and choose a huge block of concrete in the middle of nowhere. Ben said irritably. Issei. Believe me, Ben, Enoch is there, I'm sure. I said to Ben. Ben. Well, it looks like he's not here. I think you and Issei are wrong, Gwen. Ben said in a mocking tone. Gwen. No, it's here. It has to be here. Gwen said. Issei, Gwen's right Ben. I said to Ben. Ben. Thank you for participating in our contest. We have some wonderful gifts for you. Ben said in a mocking tone. Issei. Don't listen to him, Gwen, I do believe you. I said to Gwen. Gwen, thank you Issei. But there's something that worries me. When you and Ben fight at Enoch in Area 51, he referred to you as Sekir Yuite, how he knows about you and also about all the enemies that appeared the last days, you said you were in Japan when we found you. Gwen asked me. Issei. Can you keep a secret? I asked Gwen and she nodded. Issei. I'm not from here. I said to Gwen. Gwen. Yes, you're from Kuo, Japan. Gwen said although she didn't understand it well. Issei. No, I mean I'm not from this world, specifically, I'm not from this universe. I said and Gwen looked at me confused. Gwen. Wait, you're not from this world. So where do you come from, Issei? Gwen asked and I told her the truth. Issei. You are not real in my world, you are just characters from a cartoon series that I watched as a child, and everything that happens here and now is part of a video game. I said to Gwen and she had her mouth open with her jaw on the ground. Gwen. So, we're characters in a television series. This summer goes from weird to strange. Gwen said. Ben. Gwen, I'm begging you, don't tell Ben or Max. My friends will be worried that I won't be able to get back home, and I think the only way to get back to my world is to beat every level of the game. I said to Gwen. Gwen. And how many levels are there in total? Gwen asked. Ben. 23 levels. I said to Gwen. Gwen. 23 levels. 
Gwen shouted and I put my hand in her mouth to shut her up and not make a fuss in the Tartana. Ben. Yes, and this is the fourth level, and Ben and I are going to face Enoch and his combat robot, promise me that you won't tell anyone until I'm ready to tell everything, okay? I said to Gwen and she nodded. Gwen. Issei, you can trust me, I'm not going to reveal your secret. Gwen said and I thanked her and Ben came through the curtain. Ben. What were you two talking about? Ben asked. Gwen, that's none of your business Ben. Gwen said. Issei. Believe me, Ben, I'll tell you at the right time. I said to Ben and we sat down again. After 30 minutes, we arrived at the Hoover Reservoir and noticed something strange like an earthquake. Max. Be careful, there's something in the water Grandpa Max exclaimed. Gwen. Issei and I were right ah and he started screaming and we saw what had come out of the water. The Armatron Crusader. Ben and I came out of the Tartana and saw that Enoch was telling us about the robot speaker. Enoch. You Tennysons will never learn. Your alien forms have always hindered me, but with the technology of this combat robot, I will tear you to pieces Enoch said, and Ben and I prepared for the battle. They say. This ends here and now, Enoch said me preparing my Omnitrix. Ben. Let's go Ben said. The two. Hero in action the two of us said in unison, and we transformed into four arms and Gigantosaurus respectively. Ben four arms, four arms Ben shouted like forearms. They say Gigantosaurus, Gigantosaurus I shouted like a Gigantosaurus. Enoch proceeded to swat me with the Armatron Crusader's right hand like a fly, but I blocked him, and Ben bent the robot's fingers. With his colossal left fist, Enoch tried to crush us, but we played the same play and made him back off and he leant on the electric poles on the right and Ben proceeded to activate them and electrocute Enoch and the right part of the robot was damaged. Enoch did the same pattern of attacks to us again, but we blocked them easily, but this time, Enoch activated the melting cannon on the robot's chest to fry us alive, but we managed to dodge them. Enoch shook the dam with his fist and threw part of the wall at the robot's left knuckle, and Ben proceeded to attack him with his punches. And just like before, Enoch leaned on the electrical towers of the dam as before, and I fried him by activating the pedestal and damaging the Armatron Crusader like before, and now he is twice as singed. Enoch attacked with the left fist of the robot that now generates shock waves every time it hits the ground, and again activated the chest cannon and generated shock waves, but Ben and I did a forearm and gigantosaurus combo, and managed to make it the robot falls on its head, and we proceeded to play the action minigame. Ben and I transformed into XLR8 and Turbo Raya, and attacked him with a double fast combo to the robot's face, and then changed again to four arms and Gigantosaurus, and we broke the arm of Enoch's robot, and with a double left hook, the Armatron Crusader has been defeated and the left part of its face is stuck in the ground and Ben and I transformed back into humans, and we saw that Enoch has managed to swim out of the place, like the coward he is. They say. Enoch, come back, coward tell me, who told you that I was the Sekirute? I said shouting to Enoch, but he was too far away to hear me. Max. Issei, we'll catch him another time, please calm down. Max said. Issei. Thank you. I said. Ben. Issei, what matters now is that there's another villain underwater. Do you get it, Issei, Grandpa and Gwen? Boiled Ben said telling us the bad joke about him. Issei, what a bad joke Ben. I said to Ben. Max. Even so, we should have gotten even more information out of him. Behind this there is something much bigger. Max said and Gwen saw two Omnitrix crystals floating in the water, one green and one red. Gwen. Look those are not pieces of Gwen couldn't finish since Ben and I transformed into XLR8 and Turbo Raya to collect the crystals. Ben XLR8, Omnitrix. Well of course they are Ben said and I nodded and we transformed back into our human forms and inserted the crystals into our respective Omnitrixes. Ben. Let's see who's getting me now Ben said. They say. There's only one way to find out. I said to Ben and we transformed into our new recovered aliens. Cannon Beam and Spider Monkey. Ben Cannon Beam, Cannon Beam Ben shouted like a cannon beam. They say Spider Monkey, Spider Monkey I said, as a Spider Monkey, I can't believe that the alien that Enoch had stolen was a Spider Monkey, I thought he was a different one like Megachrome or Angry. Gwen. Oh, wow, the rolling wonder, and a monkey. Ben, try not to run into too many enemies. And they stole you an alien monkey, I say. Gwen asked me. I say spider monkey, yes, but don't underestimate spider monkey, I have the powers of a monkey and a spider combined, and I am very acrobatic, and I can throw spider webs from my tail. I said explaining the powers of spider monkey. Ben cannon beam, getting back to the topic, we have a mystery to solve let's bounce Ben said, and he fell because of his own weight, and the three of us ran away from Ben, who was going to run us over alive. Gwen. Grandpa, the door Gwen shouted. Max. I can't find the keys run said Max, but I stopped Ben by trapping him with the sticky spider web, and I proceeded to transform Ben back, and we went to the part of the secret challenge, and we saw how a meteorite fell near a cafeteria. Max. Hold on tight Max shouted and break the beast. Ben. 
Twice in a day. What are the chances? Ben asked irritably. I say. I've already seen worse things. I said. Max. Everybody okay? Max asked. Ben. That being said I don't think things are going to get much better Ben said, and he and I went out to face Bilgax's drones and the remaining eternal knights that were hanging around the place, and Ben and I transformed into four arms and a spider monkey, after five minutes of combat we defeated them all, and with a lot of scrap metal in the middle of the road. Ben four arms, it's always good to exercise are we ready to go out? What? Ben asked and saw that Max and Gwen were looking at him with angry faces. Gwen. Are you kidding me? Don't you see this? You and Issei can't leave all this junk lying around here Gwen said, and Max and I went to get some shovels so Ben and I could clean the road. Ben four arms, superheroes don't have to clean up their messes, Boba she is one of the advantages Ben said. Max. You know Gwen's right Max said. Issei spider monkey, it's true, Ben, we have to clean up this mess, now I said to Ben, and I gave him a shovel and we started cleaning, and Max and Gwen went to the cafeteria to have breakfast. Ben four arms, this never happens in any comic Ben said complaining, and I transformed back. I say. Ben, finish cleaning the road for me, okay? I'm going to have breakfast I said, and I went to the cafeteria and Ben just cried and I'm style, and along the way I noticed that my vision was becoming blurry, but I didn't let that worry me. I hope Riaz and the others are well. First act finished. Normal Pav. At the Mount Rushmore plumber's base, Vilgax's mysterious partner managed to bypass the plumber's security system and managed to steal what Vilgax was looking for. The vacuum projector. Lord Vilgax, phase 2 is complete the mysterious one said to Vilgax through a communicator. Vilgax. Excellent, let's begin phase 3 Vilgax said. Yes sir say hi do, now you will feel the true terror, revenge will be mine, the hooded woman said, and showed a pair of fallen angel wings, and escaped by flying to San Francisco to activate the vacuum projector. Avrias, we were in the living room and we were taking care of Issei's unconscious body, and I noticed how her hand was moving. Rias. Guys, look I yelled at my friends to come here. Gasper. What's wrong, Rias? Gasper asked. Rias. Issei has moved his hand I said. Asia. Really? Issei, don't worry, we're going to make you return to your body. Asia said. Irina. Don't go towards the light, Issei Irina said with tears in her eyes. Zenovia. Azizel will do anything to save you and we won't let you die, Issei. Said Zenovia who took Issei's hand. Rias. Issei, I know you can't hear us, but we will save you. Keep fighting, my love. I said to my beloved Issei. Kaneko. There's no doubt, Vilgax's mysterious partner is definitely a fallen angel Kaneko said to Azizel. Azizel. Yes, and I already know who he is Azazel said, and found out who the fallen angel who worked with Vilgax was. The first act of the story ends here. But even though Enoch has been defeated, even bigger problems lie ahead for Issei and the Tennyson family in San Francisco, the quest to find the Omnitrix fragments continues. Chapter 05. Trouble and San Francisco escape from the void and suspicions of Issei. After cleaning up all the junk from the robots and handing the Eternal Knights over to the authorities, I and the Tennyson family headed inside the Tartana to our next whereabouts. San Francisco. I looked out the window and there was the famous Golden Gate Bridge, I admit that I would love to have a date there with Riaz and the other girls in my harem, but I know there is imminent danger. Issei. Wow, the Golden Gate Bridge, I'm seeing it for the first time in person I said, pretending not to know anything. Max. Ah, San Francisco I remember the summer of love in 1967. Us plumbers faced a whole formation of nitromancers on Haight Street. We saved the city and the only thing those hippies could say was. How strong, man Max said to laugh happily at that memory. Then. I'm looking forward to having some peace. I'm going to watch the latest games at the arcade, I'll take a tour of the chocolate factory Ben said, and then I spoke up. They say. Maybe I'll go see a movie at the cinema, go to the amusement park I said, and now Gwen took the floor for me. Gwen. And the museums. The libraries. The stores. Gwen said excitedly. The three. Finally, a real vacation the three of us said in unison with joy, and we saw something that ended our joy. A portal of the void, and from it came an old enemy of Ben, who within five years became his best friend. Kevin Levin, or as he was formerly known, Kevin Eleven and it was still a monstrous chimera made up of various body parts of Ben's aliens. Kevin. Did you miss me, Tennyson? It's revenge time. Kevin said and he went to another direction and we saw him through the window. Gwen. Kevin Eleven. What are you doing here? He believed that he was in the void. Gwen said horrified when she saw that Kevin managed to get out of the void. Max. It seems like he's found a way out. And he has brought with him some memories Max said. Ben. We have to welcome him home Ben said and came out of the Tartana. They say. I have a very bad feeling and Kevin is not the only one who has managed to get out of the void. 
I said and I saw that when the portal closed, a small larva came out that will bring a lot of problems. Ben. Issei, it's time to transform Ben said that he activated his Omnitrix. Issei. You read my mind I said activating my Omnitrix. The two. Hero in action the two of us said in unison, and we transformed into a cannon beam and a spider monkey. Ben cannon beam, cannon beam Ben said like cannon lightning. Issei spider monkey, spider monkey I said I as a spider monkey and Vilgax's drones began to attack us. Ben crushed the drones with the weight of the cannon beam, and I threw the drones at Ben with my spider webs for him to crush them. After defeating them, we continued on our way thanks to a nearby ramp, and I propelled myself with my spider webs to go up, and more Vilgax drones came to us, and we crushed them with a combo of weight and spider webs. Ben and I switched to four arms and began to Saurus to activate the mechanism and continue moving forward, we managed to activate the mechanism, and Ben and I switched again to Cannon Beam and Spider Monkey, and continued moving forward. Ben Cannon Beam, hey, Issei, what did you and Gwen talk about before we faced Enoch? Ben said, starting to suspect me. Issei Spider Monkey, we haven't talked about anything important, man. I said lying. Ben Cannon Beam, Issei, you're not hiding something from us, are you? Ben said very suspiciously. Issei Spider Monkey, let's continue, Ben, let's not waste any more time. I said and we reached the forest of the park where Vilgax drones were waiting for us, and we defeated them in the blink of an eye, and we saw that there was a mechanism to activate the door, and we changed to XLR8 and Turbo Raya respectively, and we were in a Golden Gate Bridge and we saw that it was all destroyed by Vilgax's drones and we saw that the clouds were giving the signal that it was going to rain. Ben and I flew across the bridge and a new enemy came to us. The mercenary Vilgax. Issei Turbo Raya, Ben, these drones caused a lot of trouble for Max and the plumbers many years ago. I said describing the mercenary Vilgax, and we saw that 10 more came against us. Ben XLR8, what are we waiting for, let's fight Ben said, and we managed to beat all the Vilgax mercenaries in just 10 minutes with a speed combo, and we saw that Gwen had followed us all the way. Issei. Gwen, what are you doing here? I asked Gwen so that Ben and I could become humans again. Gwen. The question is, what do you do? Gwen asked irritably. Ben. For being so supposedly smart, you say an astonishing amount of stupid things. Ben said. They say. Ben, this is not relevant now. I said to Ben. Gwen. Yes and while you two were busy causing the worst traffic jam in the world. Kevin has fled into the woods and Grandpa Max has gone out in search of him, Gwen said worried about Max. Ben. It sucks that I'm about to get splinters in myself. Ben said. They say. There's no time to waste, Gwen, guide us to the direction of where Max has gone. I said to Gwen and she and Ben went to the exit of the bridge, and I saw on the ground a lock of long black hair on the ground, and I have the feeling that the length of that hair looked familiar to me. Ben. Issei, are you coming or what? Ben asked and I came running towards him and Gwen to transform into XLR8 and Turbo Raya respectively to head to the sawmill and save Grandpa Max. Heaven Eleven has fled into the woods, and Grandpa Max is chasing him. Ben, Gwen and I have to arrive in time to save Max before it's too late. Chapter 06, Duel at the Sawmill We Will Save You Grandpa Max, Avise, it took us about 3 hours to get to the sawmill area, and we saw the Tartana parked abruptly next to a tree that was blocking the road, and we saw that there were diamond crystals stuck in the trunk, and Ben and I were transformed back into humans. Ise. Is that what I think it is? I asked. Gwen. Yes, their diamond shards Kevin must have Grandpa Max. Gwen said worriedly. Ben. Do you think? Now the question is. Where is it going? Ben said. They say. It's time to find answers I said, and Ben and I activated our Omnitrix. The two. Hero in action the two of us said in unison, and we transformed again into XLR8 and Turbo Raya. Then XLR8, XLR8 said B. They say Turbo Raya, Turbo Raya the first said, and Ben and I went into the forest, and Vilgax's drones attacked us, but we managed to destroy them in a couple of seconds, and after defeating them, we had to activate the buttons on the wooden container, and we managed to reach a cannon beam ramp. Ben and I transformed into a cannon beam and a spider monkey to go up the ramp and reach several fell trees, and we jumped over them without any difficulty. Ben cannon beam, Issei, can I ask you something? Ben asked. Issei spider monkey, sure, dude. I answered. Ben cannon beam, what had you picked up from the ground on the Golden Gate Bridge before we left? Ben asked when he learned about the hairs I found lying on the bridge. Issei spider monkey, I only found 10 cents lying around, nothing else. Why do you ask? I said lying to Ben. Then Cannon Beam, by knowing, nothing more, and that you know a lot about Vilgax's minions and the Eternal Knights, and I looked on Gwen's laptop about Kuo, and it doesn't appear on the map of Japan. Said Ben very suspicious and that my secret is about to be discovered. I say Spider Monkey, Ben, I trust you and although you and I met in such a short time, we started to be like good friends, and you, Gwen and Grandpa Max are like a secondary family to me. 
I said to Ben trying to remove suspicions about me and more Vilgax drones attacked us and we crushed them with a combo of Wade and spiderwebs and we saw that Gwen was telling us where Kevin and Grandpa Max were. Gwen. Kevin heads east. Hurry up and chase him Gwen said, and Ben and I nodded, and we had to go through a swarm of mosquitoes, and finally we reached the other side where a new enemy was waiting for us. The stickleback, Ben cannon beam, is say, what are those things? Ben asked surprised. The say spider monkey, if I'm honest, I have no idea what they are, they must be an uncatalogued alien species from another world. I said to Ben and we decided to attack the sticklebacks with our weight combo and spider webs to finish off the sticklebacks, and we defeated them, and we went down where there were more sticklebacks, and we changed to Inferno and Frigid to defeat them with a the fire and ice combo and the next enemy came to us. The thorny aggressor. Ben I see, Ben, the thorny one now appears to be even deadlier as he matures. I told Ben about the thorny aggressor, and we defeated them with another combo of fire and ice, and burning the huge wall of thorns that was around. Ben Inferno, I'm never going to eat vegetables again in my life, Ben said when he saw the dead sticklebacks. They say. Come on, let's continue. I said and Ben transformed back into a human and I took him flying up and we saw Grandpa Max trapped with dragonfly mucus around his waist and Gwen trying to free him and we saw how Kevin came down like a beast. Heaven. You see, Tennyson, I've got Grandpa. And now what are you and your new friend going to do? Kevin said in a threatening tone. Ben. It's not obvious. Ben said. They say I see, we'll match your ass and we're two against one, you're at a disadvantage, Levin I said to the Ismotion. Heaven. Well, this forest will be your grave Kevin said attacking with a blow with his feral arms, and Ben transformed into a cannon beam to avoid him. Well Ben confronts Kevin, I will be in charge of helping Gwen free Grandpa Max. Max. You shouldn't have come here, Kevin kidnapped me to trap you and Ben in a trap. Said Max but I transformed into Turbo Raya and I freed him from his mucus prison using Turbo Raya's laser eyes and I saw that Ben was having difficulty dealing with Kevin's combos. Gwen. Issei, help Ben, I'll take care of Grandpa Max. Gwen said and I nodded and got ready to turn into a Gigantosaurus to break all the bones in Kevin's body. I threw Kevin against the same tree in which I had Grandpa Max imprisoned and I attacked him like a bull seeing the color red and I ended up breaking like six or seven ribs in Kevin's chimera body. For like 30 minutes or so I was using Kevin as a punching bag until I transformed back into a human and fell tired to the ground. Ben. Issei, it's over, you beat him. Ben said and picked me up from the ground. Issei. What's wrong, Kevin, are you giving up? I said, very tired, to the chimera. Heaven. Even if you deriated me, it doesn't matter. In the end you and your friend are going to pay me, Tennyson. You, your new friend and everyone else on this stupid planet. Kevin said angrily. Ben. Oh, yeah. Well next time, why don't you try to mess with someone who was born in the same century as you? Ben said cockily. They say. Or someone I don't end up using as a punching bag. I said to laugh and I saw that a portal of the void opened and it was sucking Kevin. Kevin. No, wait don't let them take me back. Save me Tennyson it was the last thing Kevin said and the portal closed and we will not hear from Kevin again until Ben 10 alien force and we returned to the Tartana and I saw that there was something on the floor. A black feather. Now I'm sure that that black feather must belong to a fallen angel who had defeated a long time ago and I know he's here in the game to get revenge on me, but who, I don't know. Ben. Ho, oh, man just when I thought I had no compassion for that cretin, he finds a fate that not even he deserves Ben said, feeling sorry for once for Kevin Levin. I say. But there are worse problems to worry about now. I said. Gwen. Yes, but I don't understand it. Where do all those void portals come from? Gwen asked worriedly. Max. I have a theory, but first we have to be prepared to face this problem. This problem is greater than any previous threat and we are running short. We have to be before Grandpa Max could follow we heard on the radio that strange plants were sprouting all over the country and I know they are the same plants Ben and I dealt with before. They say. Now I know where we're going. I said. Ben. It's probably not the chocolate factory or the recreation hall. Stupid alien plants Ben said irritably. They say. No, to Crater Lake. I said and we went to the next level, and I was thinking about the fallen angel who wants to take revenge on me. Heaven Levin is back in the void, but plant creatures threaten the northwest. I know they have a lot to do with the disappearance of the Omnitrix crystals. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.